Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Mary Sheehan, a pharmacist uh, living in Ohio, about 60 miles from the East Palestine train derailment. I am joined today by Dr. Ted Suzelis, whose office is about 10 miles from the East Palestine train derailment. And that is what we're here to talk about today. Not only what you can do if you've been impacted by the chemical spill acutely, but also we want to discuss this as kind of um, a reminder about what we can all do to help protect ourselves from chemicals in our air, food, and water. So Ted, you're a naturopath. Well, yes. I, I care about it as a mom and um, a pharmacist and someone who loves wellness and wants everyone to be as the best they can be professionally. I don't have too much to say about it. I dispense prescriptions. A little bit different from you because professionally you have a lot to say about things like this. Well, yeah, I mean, when we're talking about these, you know, this, the chemicals released from this train derailment, we have, I look at it two different phases. We have a, I mean, well, actually probably three phrase, phases. I mean, you have the government and everybody trying to clean up the spill. Okay. You have, you know, that's obviously we have no control over that, which Good is point. very clear. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but we as people have two different phases of this. There's definitely the phase of trying to do gentle and safe detoxification of your body, supporting your body's detoxification so that you can try to eliminate some of these chemicals uh, to help with your long-term health. And the second part of it is actually uh, trying to avoid other chemical exposures and toxins in your environment as much as possible so that you can keep that burden lower. So, um, so it's really two pieces of this. I mean, you know, and there, the first part with the safe and gentle detoxification has a lot to do with just good general health. It has to do with making sure that you're eating very healthy, uh, things like making sure you're eating lots of vegetables mm -hmm. and fruits to get a lot of those nutrients to help your body to be healthier. Uh, getting lean, healthy proteins because proteins uh, are the building, you know, the building blocks of proteins are amino acids, which uh, some of these amino acids are needed for detoxification. Um, and that's just, I mean, that's just good advice for everyone. But are you, are you saying like someone who is very close, closer than us, mm -hmm. you at 10 miles where you work, 16 where you live, me at 60, closer, um, that now's the time to really kind of just clean up everything. Oh, yeah, definitely. You're, I'm just sooner the better. Yeah, exactly. Okay. As let the government clean up the spill, but you are in charge of like doing the best you can to clean up your body, the basics, which is like what you do professionally, right? You help people right. just get the, a good solid baseline, which right. we can talk about in more detail. But first you said something, um, you know, the, the spill itself, is there any one chemical that was in the air and the water that most concerns you? So the biggest concerns would have to be chemicals like dioxins. So these are uh, considered persistent organic pollutants or, you know, commonly referred to as forever chemicals because mm. they're very hard to get rid of. And Maybe once they're in the, no, wait, do we like, are they, is it something that people breathed or it was in the water? Like how does, how were we exposed to that with this accident? Okay, so um, we don't, we really don't know at this point because they haven't been really good about uh, the analysis, but dioxins can be created from the burning of these other chemicals. Okay. Which so we know, we it know wasn't like there were dioxins on these, this train, it right. was from the burning process. 
Right. Like, so vinyl chloride was on the train and right. then that was burned because we didn't, because it's volatile. And so that went into the air and then produced some other chemicals. I know one of them was, um, I believe hydrochloric acid that that could have been what went in the water, changing the pH, which mm -hmm. most likely resulted in the death of the fish. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, with, that as far as what what killed the fish, I mean, who knows? We we don't even have any idea of all of the chemicals that were created, and that's part of the problem. And that's scary. And I think that piece of it, the unknown, is scary for people, right? Because you you don't know. So how do you know? What am I protecting myself from? Right. But I, but I think what I like about your approach to wellness has always been, <laughs> has not changed. Like your body can do some stuff, <laughs> right? right? Like right. you were saying, the word detoxification is like thrown around like the word wellness. Like I'm on a detox program and I said, well, so am I, I've got a liver, right? <laughs> People don't understand that or they forget, I don't know, that our skin detoxes, our liver, our kidneys, what, what uh, uh, just go over like the basics of what your body's able to handle maybe. And then what, what, when we should say, well, the body's not handling it. Like, is there a symptom that, that I would have that would let me know, like, you know, my body is needs some support. You know, there, that's the problem is there right? isn't always a symptom. Ah, okay. I mean, people can, have, you know, some people that were very close to, the, the chemicals and get real high exposures can have acute symptoms short term, but that's not necessarily indicative of the damage that's done in the body. Wow. Like, for instance, you look at the Vietnam War with Agent Orange. I mean, I know specific accounts of some of these people that they would empty a barrel of Agent Orange, when they used it, they cut the barrel open and grill burgers on it. Yeah. You know, they didn't know any different. They didn't think that it was unsafe. It wasn't until years and years later before they really started having the bad effects of it. Makes Okay. So then that is a very, I mean, that's kind of scary, but also right. empowering, meaning that if you have time to do the basics. Right. Right. Which is clean up your diet and um, and then we can talk more about the water and the air, but cleaning up the diet and the proteins. You said something about proteins, what, the amino acids specifically, how, how does that work? I don't even think I realized that. Like your liver needs those to do yes. this job? So, so our liver, we have two different phases of detoxification in the liver. Oh, let's talk uh, about that. Yes, yeah, so phase one, is a series of different enzymes. They call it P450. There is just a slew of different enzymes. Obviously, you know about those enzymes in yeah, pharmacy. Yeah, right. in drug metabolism, we talk about that. Yeah. Correct. And that's the first phase. So that will partially break down some chemicals and maybe fully for some chemicals in our bodies and their environment. And then there's a phase two. And there for phase two, there's basically five different pathways that can be detoxed from there. And all of these pathways need amino acids as part of that detoxification method. Wow. Uh, so like for instance, with vinyl chloride. Mm -hmm. So, you know, since that's the one that we know oh, is there for sure, hundred percent. Right. Um, and so our liver uh, uses enzyme CYP2E1 to for that first breakdown you know in the liver okay uh but then the vinyl chloride can actually become more damaging to the body with these chemical intermediates like chloroethylene oxide and uh, chloroacetaldehyde and so from you know your body you know that first detoxification breaks vinyl chloride in, down into these chemicals. And then from there, we need the second phase of detoxification that, you know, that uses glutathione to Which help like, break it down so that it can be excreted in the urine. And glutathione is an amino acid. Correct. And we need it, we need to eat it, right? 
Well, glutathione is made in our bodies mostly. It's really hard to get glutathione in an okay. oral pill or things like that. Okay. Um, but one of the main building blocks that's needed is N-acetylcysteine or NAC. Okay, which brings okay. us to my favorite topic is N-acetylcysteine. Right. Yeah, because when I was um, a little baby pharmacist at Metro Health Medical Center, at that time, going way back, acetaminophen um, overdoses were very popular. Mm -hmm. And we would dispense uh, a little injectable vials of N-acetylcysteine. Right. They also used it to in, for inhalation to help thin mucus secretions in the lungs for people with lung disease. But And then in the emergency room, it was based on weight. The doctors or nurses would open it and had a very strong sulfur smell. So they put it in a cola, put a lid on and a straw and people drank an acetylcysteine and it would literally save their liver. Correct. And, yeah. and at some point it, it went over the counter as a supplement, the history of it. I know it's still available as a prescription and now it's available as a supplement. Correct. Yeah. And it would do, and I remember learning about the pathway because it was not in pharmacy school, but when I had the job about how it did, um, well, you explained it probably better than I could. So the body takes the N-acetylcysteine in mm -hmm. and now it's available in a capsule form. And then what does it do with it? So that N-acetylcysteine is part of uh, the reactions in the liver to break down chemicals. Okay. So it's just as simple as that. That's, that's part of that phase two of detoxification. And it's very readily available orally, and it's very right. supportive. Right. And if one wanted to buy an acetylcysteine, what would what would you look for, or how would you know what to buy, and how much? And yeah, so as far as I mean, an acetylcysteine, as far as I've seen, I mean, with the, with health food stores, the drug stores, it's it's hard to know quality of products, but right. in general, um, you know, you're looking at five to 600 milligrams per capsule, maybe up to seven or 800 milligrams. Um, and really you wanna do like a thousand to 1500 milligrams a day. Okay. For how long? You know, I mean, for people in and around East Palestine, I would, I would wanna do it for like at least three months. Yeah. You know, and especially until you know everything's doing better. Um, but, you know, before I forget another thought with this, you know, we talked about how that first phase breaks down the vinyl chloride into something that might even be more toxic. Right. So if we don't have that N-acetylcysteine and the glutathione to be able to do that second phase of detoxification, uh, or as you know, it was some of these um, you know, these P450 enzymes, sometimes they just run really fast and you can't do much, you know, about it in that second phase. So, you know, there are different foods and things that can help to slow down that first phase so that the second phase can catch up. Really? What? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah. So like grapeseed extract can be wow. you know, helpful. Resveratrol, which comes from wine. Right. You know, garlic, licorice root, all, you know, have the ability to slow down that enzyme. Is that, are those um, elements, yeah, we could get them in food. Is it also available in a supplement? Because I know you have like a general liver support supplement. Right. Is that part of that? Actually, it's not. It's not. It's something separate. So if you were going to, because then people are like, well, we certainly don't want to tell people to drink a lot of wine because wine, right, exactly. because wine right. is then really hard on the liver. And then the liver's trying to break down all of that and mm -hmm. all the other things in wine. Um, like, like getting plenty of garlic in your food. That's an easy one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. And then grapefruit seed extract. Right. And licorice is, root. Say that again. And licorice root. Licorice root. That is a supplement you could buy. Right. Right. Okay, so those are things that would support that phase one to allow kind of the liver to kind of catch up doing what it does, which is right. take care of things that happen daily and then unfortunately in an acute situation. 
Okay, then where, and then the, the um, N-acetylcysteine available in a supplement form, three months while we're on that N-acetylcysteine, is there, because the others, I think licorice root, I'm, I don't remember there being much to be concerned about in so far as interactions or side effects. How about the N-acetylcysteine? But we could look that up, I guess, to be sure. Yeah, well, I mean, the licorice root, I mean, if you're doing full licorice root, you know, somebody that has blood pressure issues, I mean, it can increase the blood pressure. Oh, I do remember that now, yeah. Yes. Okay, so watch that. And you would, I mean, people would tell, I always, whenever I worked near in, in a pharmacy that had a nice over-the-counter supplement aisle, I would also always say, tell your doctor, whatever it is that you're taking. Right. Because they're prescribing medications and there could be some interaction. How about yep. with N-acetylcysteine, anything to be? Yeah, so the N-acetylcysteine tends to be very safe and non-toxic, not, you know, not a lot of problems. It's just like anything, some people will get some di different types of digestive issues. And with, with that, I would say that the biggest concern for just the rare populations is that um, it can help to release histamine if somebody has, um, you know, bad histamine detoxification and things. It can so it could pretend you know, if somebody was having a bad reaction, they could have, you know, an allergic reaction to it. Okay, that's so, fair. It's like a prescription. You know, so any type of you know anaphylactic reactions, thing you know any you know okay you know swelling you know things like that, you definitely want to make sure that you get to the hospital. Yes, absolutely. Like I said, it's very, very rare. I mean, we don't want to have people scared of taking these supplements, but we want to make sure that they're educated if for some reason they're one of those people that have the rare side effects. Right, right. Okay, then back to supplements then. Your liver detox supplement. Yes. So say, when would you, in general... Obviously, you're not prescribing for anybody listening to this. In general, right. prescribe it. How and how is it? How does it fit into something? To, uh, how does it fit into this situation? Yeah. So the our liver support supplement that we're looking at as part of this protocol, mm -hmm. it just has a combination of different herbs that support the liver and help with regular detoxification. Like milk thistle? That's also yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. yeah, milk thistle is one that's in there, yeah. yes. Yeah, I used to drink milk thistle tea all the time, and I just found it, I don't know, I, I just always felt better. It's yeah. not as concentrated, obviously, in a tea. Right. Um. Okay, so then your protocol involves the liver support. Right. The N-acetylcysteine. Yes. And... And then a good multivitamin. A good multivitamin. Okay. Because we need all of those different vitamins and minerals as part of that detoxification process also. Because the liver and the body, really, it needs to take these things to make its biochemistry to take care of. Right. Yeah, needs. the different vitamins and minerals, there's certain ones that are cofactors in all of these different reactions that happen. Okay. And so a good multivitamin and the one you have is includes all that. Right. right. Okay. So that would be the protocol. And then um, anything else with the supplements or can, I also want to make this point. Maybe it was you who said this, but somebody said this, it's something I think people forget about supplements. They are not necessarily something you take all the time every day like maybe a multivitamin but there's sometimes a time and a place for that that's what the word means right you're supplementing right because of a situation correct yeah i mean i look at the supplements and as an naturopathic doctor a lot of them are part of that healing process okay. so when i'm working with patients i want to give make sure that they have all the different nutrients to help their body to heal from whatever we're working with along with making sure they're eating healthy and they're exercising mm -hmm. and drinking enough water and all those different factors we know are important too. Right. Um, so I look at a lot of the supplements as I'm giving certain supplements that are going to help their body to heal quicker. 
Love that. and eventually be able to pull those extra supplements away because if we have to keep even if it's a, giving an herb mm. or you know a vitamin or something that is needed to help keep you feeling well then that is not really working to heal the body it's working as a drug now exactly. sometimes you need that right so it's very different in my world because in my world right. if you know like the you need the blood pressure medicine every day. You need the antidepressant every day. You need that. It's every day. It's every day because it's not truly about healing. It's, um, it's managing. It's different. Right. Yeah. Managing a disease versus healing is it, two different kinds of things and no judgment either way, but it's just, right. just to define those are, are different things. Um, is there anything else you wanted to say about supplements since you mentioned water? Of course, that's another big topic. If yeah. Any- well, I think before, before, for that, you know, just to back up, we're talking about the liver detoxification mm-hmm. and foods. You know, a couple of things that we want to really avoid at all costs while we're trying to detoxify because they can negatively affect that detoxification. So things yeah, like grapefruit, yeah. red wine, beer, and green tea. Green tea. That's a surprising one. Why? Just because it affects some of those liver enzymes. So you just want, again, it's a supportive measure. Right. Sometimes we take. Yeah, this isn't a forever measure. It's a while you're trying to detoxify. Sometimes we take things to support. Sometimes we eliminate things to support. Right. And also, I would say um, for people to check all of the backs of their medicine, their over-the-counter medicine, if they're taking it, because Tylenol has a tendency to just sneak in there. It's not on the front of the box where people shop, but it's in the back of the box. So right. you may have three things with Tylenol and Tylenol. Not You would not stop any medication your doctor prescribed, but just to be aware right. that you're taking it. Okay. And then you did mention the grapefruit. The grapefruit. Yeah, grapefruit, red wine, beer, and green tea. Okay. All right. Um, anything else to avoid? Um, I mean... When we're looking at just overall health and to support the health, I mean, I always, most people have a lot of extra trouble with dairy, with wheat and corn. You know, we want to stay away from too much sugar and and especially artificial sweeteners, those kind of things that are going to affect your body negatively and not allow you to be as healthy as possible. Yeah, processed foods. That's just more right. chemicals <laughs> while we're trying right, to right. support. Yeah, again, another reason. It's just, it's so beautiful the way naturopathy works because the things that we feed our bodies are supportive. And at the same time, we're then also avoiding the things that are not supportive. So you can right. just do so much good with a, a clean diet. Yeah. And avoiding processed foods, especially at this time. And anybody can do anything for a couple months to be to give yourself a jump start, right? Definitely. Okay. Is now a good time to go into water then? Yes. Water. Oh my goodness gracious. Do you ever go in the water aisle at the grocery store? And again, it's something we take for granted, like <laughs> the spring water and distilled water. And there's so many kinds of water. And I have an RO unit at home, reverse osmosis, you do. Yes. But for the most part, I take it for granted. But then when I, you know, something like this happens, I'm like, oh my goodness gracious, all of that going into the water and how does the municipality clean it up and get rid of it? And I'm like, like you said at the beginning, there's only so much we can control. Like maybe right. we don't wait for the government to make sure the water is 100% pure. We and, he, and even they said, you know, drink bottled water. So right. then I think if someone's not educated. How do you know which one? So, um. As far as bottled water, I mean, I wouldn't be that concerned. I mean, again, if what? I, I wouldn't be that concerned about bottled water. At all, right. I mean, you know, if it's, you know, my preference would be something that's pure, the purified water because it's the reverse osmosis filtered. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, spring water, you know, there's, you know, we don't know exactly what this, you know, it's supposed to be clean. You don't know what kind of filtration they really do with it. so. Right. There's always, you know, it's one of those that I'm always a little bit leery about, but I have been too. Typically, it's coming from good sources. Yeah, exactly. When I was drinking, uh, when I really wanted to 
clean up the water I was putting into my body and I saw the bottles, you know, I just looked at the back and looked for something that said reverse osmosis because yeah. I knew that was a purification process. Mm -hmm. And then eventually the bottles got heavy and it got to be throwing away a lot of plastic. And I just, you know, had a unit put in my house. Right. Which is something also to consider. So you either buy purified water, purified by reverse osmosis would be the cleanest because. Well, distilled water is, is the clean, you know, is probably even a little bit cleaner, but it, it gets rid of everything out of the water. And the distilled water. Yes. Because that is when they they turn the water into steam. And so right. anything that's heavy or like a heavy metal or something that couldn't be in steam, like H2O, it just stays. Right. And then they take that and, and then let it go back into water form. Right, yeah. right. You just can't do that at home. Well, they, they, you can get home distillers. Really? You can distill your own water? Oh, yeah. Yeah, my parents had a distiller at our house in the early 1980s. Oh, who knew? Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. It's it's sort of out of you know Fashion. out of popularity right now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so that would be also a good water to purchase if you mm -hmm. wanted to. Would be distilled water. Okay, right. purified or distilled. Right, and of All course, right. you know people can get the um, you know order from Colgan or whoever you know the big five gallon bottles, and they have their mm -hmm. own water coolers at home. My one yes. thing. My one thing about that is you want to make sure that the the water cool the bottle those most of those blue bottles are made out of polycarbonate, which can leach BPA into the water, right. which is another estrogen like compound. Right. That was also another reason I stopped with the plastic because of potential for leaching. And then again, there I am. I'm trying to support my body and I'm adding more to it. Right. But if you're but if you're close by, you know, this area and you're, you know, it's the little bit of BPA that might get into the water versus all those other chemicals from your tap water. It's, it's a no brainer. Yeah. Good point. Good point. And then water obviously helps the body detox. Correct. So would, is your general suggestion for people to increase their water intake after something like this? Well, I mean, it, it depends on the person. I mean, yeah. I know a lot, an awful lot of people, patients, especially younger patients that hear on TikTok that they should drink at least a gallon of water a day. And so that might be a little too much for a lot of people. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, you know, typically my general recommendation is, you know, eight, eight ounce glasses, or okay. I sort of consider the maximum is half your body weight in ounces. That's easy. So if you're 150 pounds, then 75 ounces, which is going to be a little bit more than that 88 ounce cups would mm -hmm. be, you know, serve your maximum. Okay. Um, and then what, what about like get, uh, like I purchased an RO unit for my right. home and you did too. Yes. So what do you think about, what do you think about home units? Well, I mean, I think they're, they're, they're they can be really good. Uh, the ones that I have and that I, you know, it's, you know, and the one I'm making available through my office mm -hmm. to be able to sell for people is it's a nine stage filtration process. So when we're looking at, you know, some of these, you know, chemicals, we want to make sure that it has a good carbon filter, which will absorb some of those chemicals, uh, a good portion of them. Uh, the reverse osmosis filter or the reverse osmosis membrane, you know, you're pushing water through a membrane and only the pure water can come through and wastewater that has all the different contaminants gets flushed down the drain. Um, you know, and, and that's, you know, for most of these different chemicals, it's like 98, 99% you know, eliminating them. So you take the carbon filter, which does a, a huge portion, and then subject it to the reverse osmosis. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to filter out, you know, at least 99% of most of those chemicals. Um, and especially if you're, you have city water, there's no problem with that. I mean, okay. um, you know, the issue becomes if you have well water. Uh, okay. Because a lot of these 
reverse osmosis units aren't made to just be hooked up for the well water. There's too many, oh. there's too much particulate in that in oh. that water. Does so, it overwhelm? Does it overwhelm the membrane or? Well, it's yeah. It's just gonna you know you're gonna you're going to subject the filters to way too much have to filter way too much out, and so they're going to get dirty real quickly. So what do people do with well water then? So you want to have a whole house filter, uh, you know, okay. and preferably something that has some carbon in it also to absorb okay. some of those chemicals, so that you can filter out the majority of that water, you know, of the you know the contaminants, whether it's you know chemicals or bacteria or whatnot, and heavy metals and things, and then um then with that your reverse osmosis unit will work well you know it needs to be less than like 500 parts per million with uh total dissolved solids okay okay that okay that makes sense i knew there was some little caveat with the well water and i didn't fully understand we don't yeah. have well water but i i think people that live in that area do some do yes definitely yeah um and your my unit that I have my reverse, os unit, reverse osmosis unit is quite the contraption. It lives in the basement. It has many things going on. I change filters a lot. You show me a picture of the one that you're making available in your office at a discount. It's very, very slick. Right. And I couldn't ins install mine myself. That's how complicated it was. The ones you have, people can install them themselves, correct? Right. And I also have, you know, a, uh, a plumber in, I think he's in Negley that is willing to donate services for some people if they need help hooking up, you know, filtration systems. That's lovely. Especially yeah. like even the big, like the big, bigger projects, people with the right. water. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then for the most part, if you don't have well water and you just want to buy a unit for your home, it just fits right under your sink. It's very yeah. compact and you can change the filters yourself and you can hook it up yourself. Right. Okay. Well, that covers water for sure. Right. Um, anything else you want to say about water before we moved on to air? No, I think that's good. Okay. All right. Um, air purification. Because I, I know that there was, at least immediately, a lot of people complained of um, their eyes burning and their throat. I know uh, several people, their... Um, felt that, like they were losing their voice. So obviously that was something that was going through their lungs. Right. And again, there's acute damage that happens and gets in your lungs. And then then it makes me think, well, what about the air I'm breathing every day here in Stowe, Ohio? Like, should I be concerned and what can I do? Yeah. So, I mean, for the most part in Stowe, you know, that's 60 miles away, you know, there's a lot less concern. Okay, good. Uh, but I mean, definitely for people you know, close in that area because of the amount of chemicals that it was exposed to, you know, there's a lot higher risk for there to be chemicals trapped in their houses. And, you know, I know that some people have been really concerned about that. And so that's where a good air filter can come into place. I'm still getting one anyway, yeah. <laughs> because I just, yeah. you, you have one in your house, I bet, huh? Oh, we have them in all our bedrooms. Yeah. Really? Which, what do you recommend? What kind, what unit or brand? Yeah. So the brand that we really like is uh, called Austin Air. And that's the same brand. I'm also making units available for people that want to purchase them um, available. And I'm, you know, I'm distributors for, for both the water purification company oh, and the oh, air good. purifier company. And for people that are within like a 10 mile radius of that area, I'm discounting it to where I'm just covering my costs, you know, so whatever the, the company's charging me, you know, and I'm marking it up enough to cover the sales tax and the credit card fees that, mm -hmm. you know, all you have to use to process it. And so trying to get people, uh, you know, make it as affordable as possible. Right. I mean, Those these people should be able to get, they should be getting these things, the kind of things for free and maybe yeah. eventually they would, but if you want to, right. If you really are worried about your air quality, you know, it might be something you want to make that purchase for. Now, the air purifiers, because I don't have one of those, is that something you mentioned you have one in every room? Is that is it necessary to have it in every room? So we have it in our, in, in our bedrooms is what I oh, said. Oh, okay. 
Yeah, um, part of it, why we have it in our bedrooms is because it's a nice background noise and it helps everybody to sleep. And oh. the kids, you know, if they're making noises or we're up, you know, it helps to drown out outside noise. Uh, but in, but also, I mean, your bedroom's where you spend, you know, at least a third of your day. Good point. And so good it's good to have that air as purified as possible. Do those also have filters like my RO unit, like where I would change filters on that? Yeah, so the the Austin Air filters, I believe they're supposed to be good for five years. Okay. Yeah, and they have a, you know, the big thing, you know, unlike a lot of other HEPA filters, these ones have a significant amount of carbon to be able to absorb those chemicals. Okay. All right, that's good to know. Um, so food we covered, mm -hmm. diet, supplements, water, air. What do yeah. we forget? I mean, that's, that's I the basics. Yeah. That's the basics. Yeah. Um, and then you are, we didn't, we did talk about the fact that you were offering the air purifiers that you sell in your office at a discounted rate and also the RO units. All, I, I know there's varying units. Is it all units or you're discounting? Like there, isn't there levels of those or is it just, maybe I was just on the website and was seeing everything else that they offered. Yeah. So there's a lot of different ones. I mean, I have one in particular model that's on my website in our, on our East Palestine page okay. that you know, and then that's, that's the one that's most dis, you know, discounted okay. to, you know, for people in the East Palestine area. Okay. Yeah. You know, and the rest of them I have still discounted for anybody else that wants to buy them. Makes sense. Uh, okay. The focus being to help those people. And then the, your supplement protocol, how are, how are, how can people get that? Okay. So first off, um, we have received a lot of donated NAC, you know, from Seeking Health, you know, a great supplement company that I've worked with for quite a while. Um, the owner of Seeking Health, Dr. Ben Lynch, donated a thousand bottles of NAC for right. us to distribute for people. And then also we have a, a donation from Vital Nutrients, another one of my really good suppliers, and they gave another hundred bottles of NAC and wow. 50 bottles of the liver support formula as part of my protocol. Wow. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And then people can get those by. So, yeah. So you can go to the website and we'll have a link for you to be able to purchase it. Mm -hmm. um, and you can come in to the, well, for the, for the ones we have donated, obviously we'll give them away for free. Uh, but also anything that we don't have donations for, like the multivitamin, or if we run out of the liver support, we're still giving a 30% discount, which is about as much as we can do to, you know, for that. Uh, but you can, you'll be able to order them through our website. Um, and if you pick it up in the, the ones that are donated, the NAC and the liver support, if you pick it up for the, in, from our office, it's no cost. And if we need to mail them out, we're going to charge five dollars just to cover our shipping charges. And the, the website is what's the the website? For so people? for the the page for everything with East Palestine is ohioND.com/ep. Perfect. ohioND.com/ep. Perfect. And then the office phone. It's three three zero seven two nine one three five zero. And the address? It's 755 Boardman Canfield Road, Suite D3, Boardman, Ohio. Great. So they can stop in, go to the website, give you all a call. Probably the easiest is just to go to the website. Right. Uh, you've, you've made that so easy. Right. Because, I mean, if we're getting lots and lots of people, we don't have the staffing to, to cover the phones or you know, right. to help people just walking in. So we're trying to sort of get people to the website so that yeah. we can help as many people as possible. And as quickly as possible. Right. Yeah, this is very generous of you. And it's just great to be um, at least a small part of trying to help our fellow Ohioans. Right. 
And um, yeah, I appreciate all this really good information. Is there anything else that we didn't cover? I feel like we covered it all. I think we did, yeah. I think we did, yeah. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Mary.